on there. New York Post reporter. Wrote a lot of great stuff. We'll discuss a bunch of them now. Come on in. Welcome, welcome. Thank you, NC, and again, because I talked yeah, over that, we don't have roll. to pay a Disney corporate. Thank you so much for joining us, Ricky. Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, wow. Well, can you give us, do you want to give us, uh, if you're not allowed to say as far as agreements are concerned, any, can you give us a uh, vague idea of what the next book is about, or the manuscript, what do you got? Um, yeah, so it's The Canceling of the American Mind, that one will be out in October. Okay. I'm, Ooh. Yeah, I'm co-authoring with Greg Lukianoff, he was the author of The Coddling of the American Mind, and so nice. it's like a follow-up, the first one was about Gen Z, and now I'm joining as a third member of the team is like inside the belly of the beast um, awesome. in my generation and yeah so it's about cancel culture it's about free speech culture how we've moved far away from our um, ideals that should underpin our society here but um, yeah it's it's gonna be out in October in your research what did you see find to be like the most egregious example of recent or maybe it doesn't even need to be recent canceling Oh my gosh, there was a crazy story from Hamline University um, recently where this teacher showed, or professor, showed a piece of art that depicted Muhammad, which is sacrilegious to some Muslims, right, yeah. but she showed it. It was from like the 15th century or something. It was commissioned by a Muslim king. It was painted by a Muslim artist, so it was like a w worshiping Muhammad and not, mm. not like making fun of it in any slight way. She put a, a warning on the syllabus. She told everyone, you can email me. I'll give you different artwork to look at. You can walk out of the class. You can skip the day entirely. Like she did everything up front. Ended up losing her job for showing the, oh, come the on. photo or the, um, a photo of the art after also like warning people Ugh. before she even did it. Yeah. And then the university, like rather than, usually they'll do something egregious like that. Some watchdog group like Fire, where I work, will show up and say, like, you got to reverse course on this. And they just doubled down over and over and over. And they were like, causing offense is more important than our academic freedom and like just the, the craziest stuff. So, yeah. yeah, I would say that that's the oh, most egregious boy. recent one I've seen. I, uh, uh, I just, uh, what a world we're living in. You keep, and we keep, ha all of the stories that we have, and we have a fuckload of stories that always involve canceling. Someone will always start talking about, like, oh, you know, I think the pendulum's gonna swing the other way, but I keep waiting. I keep waiting for people yeah. to have a little less hyper. But also, if I was a student in that class, I'd be like, sweet, day I don't have to come to class. Oh, for sure. Right? Yeah, no yeah. kidding. None like, of them who's, did that, Who's offended, like, we, we've gotta cancel her. I'd just be like, this teacher is amazing. She's giving us so many passes to not do yeah. the work. It's great. I equate the canceled teacher no school thing to snow days when we were on the show called Red Eye back when we were working at your company. And anytime some actual hard news would happen or a politician would die, snow day yeah. for us because <laughs> we didn't do anything. So they immediately cancel Red Eye. <laughs> and uh, off to the bar we went. And you didn't want to celebrate too much while you were in the office. Well, but it was the, yeah, I just felt as a kid. Because you, often there were deaths involved. Sure. So yeah, it yeah, was yeah. a little. In my mind, though, I was doing doing skips. Like, <laughs> oh, Michael Jackson, he took three days off my schedule when he died. Oh, it's fantastic. Oh. Yes, that's me giraffe. on a giraffe. Huh. Yes. So uh, I guess what we have here is like what is a play on words for a comedy club that I don't believe, don't believe exists anymore way, called the Laugh Factory. Joanne is a giraffe human hybrid at an open mic night. And Bill is heckling me. I guess, in a pith helmet. Yes. So take it that way you will. So You're welcome, America. Joe Roken has a new cancel-proof comedy club in Austin, Texas, called the Comedy Mothership. Um, debuted this week. How old is this? From Fox News. What do we think about the know. name? One attendee praised Rogan's new venture as an opportunity for people to come speak their mind for free speech without fear of repercussion. Um, it has been praised by attendees for its defiance of woke attacks on comedy. Billy from nearby Dallas, hey Billy, noted no that relation. he's pretty excited about it because Joe Rogan at this point in his career is uncancelable. Up, uh, that sounds like a challenge. Yeah. You can't cancel Joe Rogan. I mean, like, famous last words. Seriously. I <laughs> Therefore, like him. I mean, they already pulled out the N-word reel on him, so I guess at uh, that point, like, I well, if, if you can make it through that, maybe you are good. Seriously, yeah. Well, but he says, Therefore, you've got an amazing comedy club that is also full of uncancelable amazing people. No, no. <laughs> that comic who's starting out, I think, could still get canceled. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 
Someone else said, it's a reminder that comedy is supposed to be funny. Everyone is here to have a good time, and that's really what this is, the embodiment of free speech. Um, going on, everyone's afraid to speak up. Everyone's afraid to speak out. And having a place like this where folks can come and just joke around and have a good time and not fear repercussion or fear they're not going to be booked again or anything like that. It is truly freedom of speech. It's good for Austin. It's good for the country. It's good for Texas. Should we say the planet? Good for the planet. Uh, couldn't be better. Um, okay. Here's how I feel about this. Freedom of speech, great. Comics should say whatever they want. But I worry that it's just not going to be funny. <laughs> like, yes, you can be a comic who can say whatever they want, Gino, but it has to be funny, Gino. And if it's not, then that's the issue. That's why you won't get booked again. But you'll bitch that it's because right. someone got offended. Maybe not. Maybe you just didn't make people laugh which is the, the most important thing, in my opinion, at a comedy club. Yeah, ideally. Um, what do you think? I mean... I'm just curious what makes it an uncancelable comedy club. Like, or do they have some sort of special rule involved? Like, I've... I'm assuming it's just because he runs it, so even if okay. they are having some sort of trouble, they'll still have a place there. I see. Yeah, or like, like I've as, been... as the owner, he probably wouldn't be like, we can't have that comic back because of what they said. Right. You know? Yeah. That makes sense. I mean, I've been places where they take your phone so that you can't record it and like oh, yeah. dock someone. Like, totally. I mean, yeah. that seems like a good policy to maybe implement at more clubs. But Although, if you are know. the customer, yeah. would you actively avoid that place because you know in the back of your mi mind that you're losing your phone for so long and the pain? I would and rather. Not even that you're addicted to your phone, but just the pain in the ass process of getting it back at the end. Or well, they you don't hand it over. They, they give have you the bag. Like, thing yeah, they now. give you like the bag. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I don't know. I mean, work. that seems like a good policy, I feel like, just yeah. by and large, to, like, if you, you can test things out without feeling like that's going to live forever in someone's phone recording or something. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. I mean, I do think that there is an issue with cancel culture and comedy for younger younger comics that need to do, like, the college circuit and stuff like that. Like, that's just oh, God. absolutely impossible. Oh, my God, um, yeah. Yeah, and, like, the way that things live forever now, like, I do think it's a legitimate issue, but... Yeah. Well, and... Interesting. I, I will be curious. It's my favorite crutch word. I'm curious yeah. to see if this draws more crowds. It mm -hmm. must. Even if there are people going there to protest maybe a certain comedian or something, it's still, it's still bodies and it's still press and it's probably only going to become more successful because of that. I wonder how far he's going to take the uncancelable factor because Noam Dwarman... Uh, owner of the Comedy Cellar, has been on our show a bunch. He got a lot of shit for letting Louis C.K. come back to his yeah. club. And in Louis C.K.'s uh, circumstance, it wasn't what necessarily what he said, but what he did. I was about to say allegedly, but I guess he admitted to it. Uh, and that was where the issue was for a lot of very, uh, you know, triggered people or something. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if stuff, how that's going to work there, you know? Yeah. If it's not necessarily something they said, but an action that they did that canceled them. I heard that one of his waitresses got, like, spat on in the subway after that. Which is crazy, because she had a, a shirt on, a oh comedy God. seller shirt on. Oh, my. That's a... Yeah. Wow. You're yes. going to have a lot of material for this book. But like, oh, I know. We interviewed him for it, actually. Oh, that's oh, great. Wow. Yeah. Well done. What do yeah. you have to say? I mean, I don't want to... He did the interview with my co-author, so I've um, yet to dig through the quotes but um he like I, he had a general concern about it we did a panel actually at the comedy cellar um my co-author and me uh for a podcast which was kind of funny because i'm That's certainly so cool. not a comedian but i got to just the only time i've ever been in a comedy club in my entire life gracing a stage mm -hmm. um, That's awesome. there of all places but yeah well, with his gnomes podcast stuff he'll have like a lot of journalists on and stuff like that there are yeah. some comedians who would love to be where you were. I know. <laughs> no, exactly. That's why I'm like, that was... Actually, I, I had... That's a lie. I've been to one... Like, I've attended one comedy show, aside from that, on a bad second date. And it was the only time I've ever been. Um, and it was, like, the COVID reopening of some yeah. club. And then Jerry Seinfeld just showed up unexpectedly <gasps> and did, like, half of the entire lineup instead. So I was like, well, now I can't go back because I've been spoiled. Oh, like, no kidding. That yeah. was my one experience that I've ever had. Meanwhile, the... the guy was probably like, this is the best second date I've ever know. been on. It was a complete accident. <laughs> it's always like, if it's a date like that and it's early on, it's because the guy has nothing to say, so he'd rather just oh. tell you what's in front of him. Because mm. Yeah, I don't know anyone who's really been like, he took me to a comedy club. 
It was the You're best. Right yeah, second now. date is a little <laughs> early. <laughs> First couple dates, you get butts in the seat. Oh, uh, <laughs> that's so funny. Uh, yeah, that. Well, I guess it's an activity, though. Um, Austin, Texas, though, is interesting. Mm -hmm. And someone did say in this article, like, this area does kind of need it because Austin is a pretty liberal city compared to the rest of Texas. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, um, but lots of college kids who I'm sure will go on many second dates to this comedy <laughs> club. And I don't know. I think this is a good, a good spot for it. Did they say how big it was? I'm uh, picturing just because it is in Austin. You know, the square footage Rogan. is not in here, I, This is what people want to know. <laughs> There's your reporting 101 from a non-Emerson professor. How many bathrooms are there? That's what I always I'm look at before I go to a venue. As you saw, it's always surprising to people, I think, the first time they go to the comedy cellar because it's so widely known mm -hmm. and how tiny it it's really tiny. is. It's true. And be, it, the fact that it's Joe Rogan, he's like a billionaire or whatever, mm. I'm picturing like a, just a gigantic but amphitheater. Exclusivity is super huge, too. Yeah. Like yeah, The bigger it is, the more people there are that are going to try to cancel someone, I would imagine. That's Very true. More, more time you're going to have to take out to grab those phones as well. Uh